everyone, Def Camp here, and welcome to Def Talk, episode number 29. This is the talk show that focuses on everything World of Warcraft, whether it's classic, retail, or the players that play it. We're going to cover it all. Today we have with us, of course, the one and only Melderon. How the hell are you doing, Melderon? I'm good. I'm alive. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> and we got with us one of the one of the best, and I, I'd say one of the damned hardest working WoW content creators out there. Grace for days. How the hell are you doing, brother? Appreciate it, bro. Well, man, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing good. Doing good. All right. That is fantastic to hear. I'm I'm really glad to have you on, man. You got like really positive energy. I'm really feeling this is gonna be a good dev talk. So uh, I know I've been waiting for this. Yeah, you you have you have you've been waiting patiently. We've been pretty uh, we've been so crazy booked, guys. So if you put in for a dev talk, we're getting to you. But um, let's uh let's start off where we start with everybody. I want to hear how did you first start playing World of Warcraft and Absolutely. when did you first start playing? Yep. So it all started the summer of two thousand and five. And if oh. it wasn't for my older brother, I got a, he, he was 15 at the time. So he was a freshman and he went and stayed with my aunt and uncle one summer. And he comes back and my uncle Jed was playing World of Warcraft with our other uncle Gary. And of course, Jordan was there for two weeks. So he came home. He said, mom, I got to get this game. She didn't know there was a subscription fee at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so or else she probably wouldn't have let him get it. But he got the game. And the funny thing was, Jordan came home with the game, and I was so excited because he hadn't been home for two weeks, so I was playing on the PlayStation 2, and I had the PlayStation 2 all to myself. Oh. And uh, he was like, screw it, I'm just getting on the computer, and I was like, yeah, forget you. Dude, <laughs> it took an hour for that thing to download, I don't know, it, all day it seemed like, not an hour. Yeah. I think it took all day for our computer to get the game downloaded. <laughs> we were talking about this the other day, he said whenever it launched... Um, he remembers seeing me just drop the controller and watch him play and just stand there like in awe. And he was like, yep. And he, he didn't let me play for like two weeks. Oh, yeah. I, I know how that feels, man. I know exactly how I, that feels. I've done that before to him, yeah. yeah, definitely. I've got older brother, and I spent more time watching him play video games yeah. than I actually played them. So, yeah. yeah, I know how that feels. <laughs> yeah, so so it, it wasn't probably two weeks until I got to play. I'll be honest. Um, wow. He wasn't very nice, but... He was playing a Torn Druid, and so my yeah. first my first character actually I didn't say this in my channel and on my videos it actually was a Torn Druid because Jordan and my my uncle Jed convinced him hey you got to go Druid because they're the most versatile they're the most they can do everything and at level 20, 22 or whatever they get or thirty I don't know when it is they get the uh, speed boost uh, travel form yeah thirty form. yep mm -hmm. and so he was just talking about how. Um, beneficial it was to go druid so i was a druid initially but then i was a nine-year-old kid and i was like ah the horde doesn't really fit my style and after about a week or two i went gnome and i had to go oh on my yeah. god <laughs> <laughs> and best of all warrior gnome a nine-year-old kid all right at least like, i can i can drive with that a little bit a little bit no yeah. warrior. Okay. all right you were nine you were nine yeah. you know because we all know every other Every other gnome out there is also um, nine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. I, I can vouch for that. I think I've, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it cracks me up. I literally picked the hardest class as a nine-year-old kid to level with. Yeah. A warrior. And, I, and I, I have fond memories of grinding it out and running back and forth to my corpse. Oh, that's, that's what it seemed like I did all the time. It was nuts. Melderon's got those memories. Yeah, dude, too. that happened to me so much. I actually deleted my level sixty. First sixty I ever had was a warrior. I got so fed oh. up with how shitty I. I was just really bad at the game, right? Sure, absolutely. But I got so I got so fed up of how hard it was to do anything. I was just like, "Fuck this!" I deleted Wait, did it you even hit and 60? I rolled a mage. I, I did. Like I did. I hit sixty. Like I didn't oh, okay. hit sixty on the mage right. until the Burning Crusade. because uh, it was at the right, very okay. end, right? So I was like, you know, F it. The new expansion's coming out. I'm thinking, yeah, what if I just stuck with it, right? And That's I right, just because everyone wanted you to tank and you couldn't tank. Yeah, and I was like, you yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, what's tanking? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what the right. f is that? And you knew what tanking was, but you didn't know how to. Do okay, it, I obviously. knew. Yeah, I knew there was yeah. somebody who would. That's their job, but I didn't. I didn't right. know how to. You know. Yeah. But. Anyway. Yeah, no, that cracks me up. Um, I'm think I'm I'm just I'm going back on remembering the leveling process, and I remember tanking groups because I was a warrior, a gnome warrior. Yeah. They trusted a 10, 11 year old kid to tank dungeons, <laughs> which I think is awesome. Looking back on it. I remember, and I pointed this out in one of my videos, 
I remember the first time I got my first pair of shoulders and I remember my first mm. headpiece yes. and I'll never forget. And in the first time I got um, that headpiece slot filled was in Nomergan and we spent all morning, all Saturday morning. It was probably four or five hours and we killed the last boss and uh, that stupid cloth headpiece dropped. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I needed it, dude. Yeah. And I stole it from whatever cloth <laughs> And I threw it on, and I was Fucking like, yes. I got my first headpiece. And I, I mean, it was huge. A gnome it's like 10 and elect, 5 spirit. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is. Well, spirit's not bad. Fucking but gnomes, dude. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and yeah. so then I'm like, dude, people trusted me to tank groups with this headpiece on. Like, that's how it was <laughs> back in the day, man. It was, dude. It legit was. And they probably thought you were a badass because you had a headpiece. <laughs> they literally thought, oh, my God, this guy's got a headpiece. Like, holy shit. Yeah, that's funny. I do I do uh, remember. I think the, the one that sticks out to me, I have no idea why this piece sticks out, was the Carapace of Tutankash. What do you get in uh, RFD? It's off the spider boss. Yeah. It's like that really nice plate chest piece. Please. And that was like the first piece of plate I ever got as my warrior. So that, for nice. me, I like, always remember that piece. I don't know why because it was plate. I think that's why. Yeah. yeah um, okay. But it's funny what you remember, you know. It's like... I remember it getting is, this dude. or that. I remember yeah. Dan, I remember being in Stranglethorn Vale, and I think that's where there's. I, I never level blacksmithing after this because it's it's like I have this PTSD with blacksmithing. But my buddy mm-hmm. Dan, who you, you, tea time, I think you listened to the uh, we had the, the, that uh, conversation I posted mm-hmm. a couple days ago. Um, but he, I think there's a Thorian Brotherhood guy in Stranglethorn Vale. I could be totally wrong about this, but I, I distinctly remember being in Stranglethorn and him handing me like ore, and I was smelting it. Oh, in um, Booty Bay, I mean, that's yeah. I think it's worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't leveled blacksmithing since that. I have PTSD with blacksmithing. I'll never do it again. Yeah, but, yeah I hate blacksmithing. But um, so I remember like this. I remember these little things. I remember getting my forty mount. And the only reason yeah. I got the sixty was because of tea time. Honestly, let's be honest. Yeah. He paid for my mount. He got me gear. You know all this stuff. I would have never had the sixty without him. So I was a lot more self sufficient. You were, yeah, you were. I was also a rogue, and I I remember like my first real PvP experience. No was, way. I dude, it was fucking epic okay it was a warrior right and i forget where i was i was running in i think it was south shore yeah because i was alliance my first i will admit i i, I made the mistake the first time <laughs> i played alliance because i thought oh these are the good guys i'm gonna play an elf be like legolas you know so uh i made it a night elf uh, night elf i'm sorry night elf rogue and i'm running along you know like south shore and um this I believe it was a troll warrior mm-hmm. charges me, right? And I was like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? And I I I was a I was a sword rogue and I remember just like using all of my abilities. I first I garrouted him, uh, <laughs> uh not garout, I'm sorry, gouged him and yeah. you know was like, okay, I'm gonna open up on him. So I gouged him, like use my cooldowns, use vanish, try to open up on him <laughs> and at that point, I had like no poisons or anything. And what I did is I loaded him up with bleeds, and then I would just like like run away from him, try to get away, try to get away. But dude, we ended up being like I had like this much health, no yeah, like way. this much health. We were like running at each other. So I hit it with my sword, and he dies. And I was like, I won my first PP experience, and like he was so bad. Shut. Up. I mean, like he didn't like after like I got away, like he did like so many things wrong. Like I used evasion, he wasn't using overpower. Right. Um, he- I, mean, just, I, I just got so lucky and I felt so good after that, dude. I was like picking all the fights. Like, I, it was great. Yeah. Oh, so honest, was I, I wish we could see the video of that first fight because it'd be horrible. Oh, it would be so did. bad. I made so many yeah, mistakes. I, I wish I could see the yeah. first video of everything I've ever done tanking, healing, know. you know, all the things I've done. For, and it's just like, I'd be like, who is this noob that's doing, you know? It, yeah. And I'm, you know, to, to some people, to some people, we're still noob, right? These these people, that knew, who, these 200 IQ players, I'll right? Speak for yourself, though, bro. Well, what I'm saying is, like, there are people, always, there's always someone bigger and better than you, right? That's the thing. And it's the yeah. same thing in Classic Well, I maybe. think. Yeah. But maybe, maybe not I'm for kidding. you. But, I'm kidding. I'm so, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, let's transition a little bit. Because, but so I, you you gave me some stuff you wanted to talk about. One of the topics was role playing. Are you a role player? So this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Okay, I'm not sure. Whenever I hear the word role playing, <laughs> the first thing that comes you to mind about is sex? like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll dress up as a gnome. It's all right. <laughs> So I'm like, I don't understand what role playing is. I I remember getting on a role playing server. It was probably in Wrath of the Lich King. I'd heard about it, and I went to Goldshire to see oh, what all the God. hype was about, and it was nuts, right? 
And um, so I never, I never did role playing. I don't know if I'd be interested in it. The only, the only reason I feel like I might be interested in it um, after you guys explain to me exactly what it is, because you probably have a better idea than I do. I read up lore for the first time when I was making videos um, mm. at the beginning of my YouTube creation. And I read about the gnomes in Vanilla WoW. I mean, the, the goblins in Vanilla WoW and how expansive they were, like how deep the developers built out their lore and, yeah. and, and how they were going to have the undermine and how they were just, the goblins were this faction that just cheated everybody. And it all made sense. I mean, I, I realized, I noticed it in the game, but I didn't realize it until I read up on the lore, like, dude, these guys are cheapskates. Like they, they rip you off. They're in the strong point there. They have all these central points for transportation and they jack up their prices on the auction house. Like, and, and I, I just realized like how much more immersive the game became whenever I heard about, whenever I um, just read up on how the war was for the goblins. And I was like, dude, this changed the game for me. Like, and I personally, I've never read up on lore World of Warcraft. I just, for the first time since I started doing YouTube, read up on the first, second, and third war or whatever it was. And yeah. I know that sounds bad, but like World of Warcraft as a nine-year-old was so immersive. I didn't oh, need to read about it. I didn't, I didn't play the previous games. I, I've never had to read the lore to get anything out of the game. But since I stepped foot into lore just a little bit, I mean, it blew my mind to the point I might be into role-playing. What does role playing mean? I can't wait to read all the quests and hear about all the storylines in every single zone. Like that's gonna be sick, dude. I've never done that. Yeah. I've just yeah. gone from point A to point B. So I that's guess so cool. Yeah, let me. I think let me go first before uh, before Death yeah. Camp. That's okay. So I think um, so. There's a difference between role playing and actually just in, involving yourself in the lore itself, right? So you can mm -hmm. read the quest text, read uh, books. You can get involved in the lore without actually role playing. What role playing is is the is the action of acting your character out in the world right. so what i mean by that is is like you walk into goldshire right on your let's say uh, hor let's try to think as basic as possible you're your human paladin you're you walk in on you know goldshire <laughs> you hit your your walk key and you roll rp walk into goldshire right <laughs> and you say like dost thou if like you did the whole like language <laughs> shit that's role play. Dead, i mean i'm dead like, like yeah, yeah, now yeah. all the role, now all the role players are getting so triggered right now that's like that's not that's not role play but like okay essentially <laughs> dash, dash, e. yeah you're, you're, you're acting out your character as he would be if it was like lord of the rings or something right like yeah that's yeah. what role playing is you can be involved in the lore and read and enjoy the lore without actually and being a role player you can give your character lore so you can give your own character oh, backstory That's based deep. in the lore so say you can be like oh yeah i was a druid who was in the first war of the ancients and you know i, I fought well, you'd be under, immortal if that was the case well, no, the, the elves are, they live, you know, they lived as long as, the elves are immortal. I mean, they, they're not mortal, but they live really long. Okay, yeah, well, that's not normal. Yeah. So, like, the Tarande and, and, and Alfure, they were around the, in the first war, in the War of the Ancients. They were alive then. That's what I'm saying. So you could uh, be like, That's true, that's I, true. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you could be like, I was one of the elves who fought in the War of the Ancients, and if you were, like, a druid or something like that, and, like, have your own backstory and all this. And, you know, what I was going to say, it's really cool, is, like, there's so many people out there, like yourself, who... I mean, you know, and I was one of those as well for a long time who didn't give really a crap about the Lord, right? right. And, um, and you know, you, you do quests and you're like, why am I doing this quest? Why am I doing this? And you get little pieces, right? It's like, okay, you know, like in the Burning Crusade, for example, you're in Outland. Then I'm like, why are we killing Ilden? Wasn't he a good guy? Right. You know, like, like, and then you're I'm like, why did we kill Kalthas? And like, you know, a little, the lore in, and especially the lore in Vanilla, a lot of it is kind of like, you're like, why are we a molten core? You know who is Ragnaros? It's like, you know, why is Anixia helping the um, the um, forget the guys outside Storm and the the, the Fias and like all these little things? <laughs> but when you start looking into it, it makes the world so much richer. It makes mm. every quest so much cooler, so much deeper. And you're like, it gives meaning to what you're doing. And you yeah. know, no longer you just aimlessly killing mobs, aimlessly like just leveling your guy up, which is awesome. It's really cool to feel yourself more powerful. Right. But just like Skyrim, right? When you when you do the quest in Skyrim and you progress the storyline and you get a cutscene or you something like that, in WoW, you have to kind of create your own cutscenes by reading the quests, by you know looking at the lore, by figuring out why am I doing this, what's going on here. And I feel like you, you see you're so rewarded when you do that because it really opens up a whole other aspect of the game. Because the lore in WoW is freaking amazing. It really right. is. 
the great thing about classic wow is you know just because you haven't done something doesn't mean you know you can do it now like there are so many things that i still haven't experienced within classic wow and that's amazing you know so i i would say i do it dude give it a shot you know, yeah. be a little gnome uh, warrior who's like. Well, I, I don't think he has to role Island. play in order to <laughs> no, 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 no. enjoy the lore, right? So, like I said, before, no, you don't. You I enjoy don't. the lore, and I never actually role played, right? So, oh, right, yeah. Oh well, I'll be honest, dude. I, as this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, like I'm about to go guns out blazing. Like I'm gonna do it all, man. So I'm gonna get a couple lines to read up and give my torn druid a character uh, as I yeah. Play through the game. I'm going Druid. And Druid of all of all I characters, think... dude. I mean, I feel like I could role play that better than any other class. J- just because it's Druid. I mean, and and yeah. like uh, and the other thing I'm excited about are class quests in the class mm. quest for Druids. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, dude. I oh my goodness. I it, it, like and and I I understand. I know where to go for all the class quests for the mm. most part. And I've read the quest line a little bit. But man, just yeah, putting yourself into just the game and immersing yourself and really latching on to the lore and throwing role playing, dude, you're gonna enter enter a whole new world. Even though we've already played through the game, and I yeah. and I think about it, well, and it's weird, dude. And I guess this is and I'll kind of transition into what we we're talking about next. But I never played on private servers in the last ten years, mm. uh, and so I haven't read the quest lines. I haven't done all the old quests, and I and I played in Cataclysm, um, Mists of Pandaria. What was it at Warlords? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I jumped in. <laughs> I, I started and quit in all those expansions, and then after Warlords, I didn't play Legion, haven't played BFA. Um, but I I, I haven't experienced those old quest lines. Um, I haven't been in the old world since the first time that we were there, since the yeah. since Wrath of the Lich King, and I, I'm. Honestly, I'm so excited that, that I have it, um, and, and I think everyone else should be too. And and it's not the private servers. I mean, I'd say they're missing out on just. So I have to ask, news. why did you never actually try to roll in a private server? Mm-hmm. So, the the number one reason is because I was never going to waste my time. I'm such a completionist. Mm. I'm so conscious of my time, and and, and like if it's going to be thrown away in two, three years, and five years in 10 years and there's not even a big player base this isn't official and and vanilla wow is deep man you can't just play vanilla wow you've got to invest your life Mm -hmm. absolutely you don't have to but like if i were to play i know what you mean yeah i'm gonna invest so much time just for it to go away that's that's ultimately the reason i never played and i gotcha yeah and and it it would never the private server i mean yeah I, i wanted to play and i actually played launch on chronos 3 and um, that was the only way I was going to ever play again because I was like, dude, I'm only getting in on a fresh server. There's no yeah. way I'm, you know, if I'm ever going to re-experience the game, it's going to have to be fresh. And so I played like the first 18 hours of Chronos 3, got to like level 20. I was a warlock. And I was like, screw this, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to keep yeah. going. Like, so so that's why I never I give you a lot hard. of credit for not, because it, it was too I, hard. I, I for, it was too hard for me yeah. not to be able to do that. I, I've already I, rolled. I've already hit level cap with like four characters. On <laughs> yeah, he, he got me. Like I was holding out for a while. I was playing Legion for a while. Um, I had gotten into like the mythic rating. Like I was, you know, we were clear in mythic raids. We're doing high level mythic plus, but it was horrible. Like I despised the, the only thing that. Came. And meanwhile, Meldron's like, dude, come to this private server. Come check it out. Come check it out. Come check it out. I told him like finally, 30 like, times and finally he did. He told me so many times. I was like, I finally, I did it. Dude, I logged in that first time. Yeah. The first time, you know, you, you spoke about how <laughs> that first day you were, you were like, you know, wide eyed watching your brother play and you were just staring at him, you know, drop a controller. Right. I got a piece of that back. I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I literally did like, you know, and I hadn't felt that in years and there were so many games that came out in between the time that wow was in its greats you know the first three expansions uh to when you know it started going down and i tried so many different games that in in their own right were amazing but they never gave me that feeling wow did Mm. and every time i was let down every time i was let down over and over and over again and the only thing that came even close and gave me that satisfaction once again was going back to private servers. So I'm glad I did, but I'm also in a way a little 
a little bit that I didn't wait for Classic because I know that it would be um, another hopefully amazing experience again. But I'm, I know I'm going to recapture that experience. I'm, I'm still recapturing it now. And you, know, you mentioned things like Class Quest. And what I want to talk about the Druid Quest because I was actually doing some of the Druid Class Quest today. Uh, I was in the Barrens where you have – and they're so cool because they're so Druid-like quests. I was uh, – you have to – you know those um, – The gazelles. Sickly gazelle in the yeah. Barrens that everyone – Kills. Everyone yeah. kills them. Like warriors always right. charge them to, to move around. And so I'm running around there trying to, to, to cure them. And like every time I get to them, here comes a war, it charges it and kills it. I'm like, God damn it. You're like, damn it, like, Melderon. It's like, like every time I get up to. But it's. And you're like cleansing the earth and doing all these things. And I, like I really feel connected to Druids. I feel like they're very underrated in a lot of reasons. And like when it comes to PE, they're so quick. PvP, they're amazing. You know, they're great healers and everything. And I'm questioning, like, you know, do I want to play? Because I played a Druid in Wrath, and I loved it. Right. Um, so, like, every day I'm still, you know, capturing different moments. Like, even though I've been playing WoW for 14 years, classic, you know, vanilla, BC, Wrath, Kata, um, Mists, um, uh, Warlords, Legion, I played all of them a little bit off and on, went back to private servers. But still, every day I'm learning something new. I'm experiencing something new, and I'm still reliving that vanilla experience. And like, like you said, that moment where you drop that controller. Like, there's been other games out there that have been amazing. There's been Dark Souls. Oh, yeah, thinking Skyrim, about how many times been... have you like when we were playing on the on the on let's say server that cannot be named, and we were walking yeah. around. How many times did you see like a doodad? Or like something. Like we walked into uh, what was that, Mocha Jin or whatever in Stone Town Mountains. Yeah. How much time did you spend there before we went there? Well, I, I I spent. Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, Seriously. It's beautiful. Like, like that part. It's like beautiful. I, I, and I'm like, right. yeah. I've never spent like I, I you know I never I always bypass Stone Town Mountains. I always do because I just yeah. level in the Barrens as much as I possibly right. can. Yeah. And you get yeah. used to the things that you do. Like oh I did I, you know I did um I want to do Silver Pines. I've done it so many times. I know the quest. Let me do that. But when you get out of your comfort zone. Like I spent, it was like what twenty minutes in that little troll camp, looking at a caravan, and that they had these really cool. They had like there were art assets in the game there in Stone Town that were nowhere else in the game. Yeah. So they had these like like these um animals hanging, and they had this like really cool like uh, troll looking thing, and it nowhere else in the game were there those art assets. And I found that, and I was like, this is so cool. And then in Stone Town, where there's that huge waterfall, you have to get to the top of and kill those guys. I'm like. I'm experiencing this literally for the first time, you know, and for people who like never played as say you're a die hardcore player, right. if you never played Alliance dude, like I know you might hate them and all, but you're right. literally like not experiencing almost half the game. Cause they're oh, 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 so definitely. good. They're so good. They're so good. So I, I will, I, so as much as I'm a player, yes, I'm going to yeah. roll Alliance and play through all the quests just for the fact that, <laughs> there's so much lore and experience in there. Like yeah. you said, I mean, it's going to be an awesome experience. The other thing I've never played, I've never quested through stone town and mountains. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. There's so much I haven't done in vanilla. Wow. And, and so get this with the private server players, these guys, they're still gonna, like you said, it's still going to be a new feeling, yeah. not as much as, you know, someone that's never played private servers and stuff, but it, it, it's, it's funny. I, and we can kind of transition in kind of what I was saying next. Um, like the state of the classic wild community right now. And I, and I, and I'm really intrigued by this. And mm -hmm. I, I, so this was really interesting. I did, I, I, I didn't know what the classic wild community was going to be like, and I didn't understand it until I started making content two months ago. Mm -hmm. So I started making content two months ago. Right. And everything's going cool. I mean, I'm psyched. I'm, I'm pumping out videos and I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, dude, I played vanilla. You know, this is awesome. You know, making all these videos on all this stuff. And I don't know what, oh yeah, I know what it was. It was, I thought, dude, this was my first video that got a ton of views. Wait, can I just I stop you for was... one second? Uh, let me guess. It was somebody who said, you never effing rated Nax. You don't know anything about vanilla. Was that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I made the, yeah, yeah. It, it's along those lines. No, no, no. So it was, I made this video and I was psyched, dude. Um, I thought it was going to get tons of hits. Um, the difference between classic and vanilla wow you know and it, and it was and it was it was basically like dude 
yeah, all you private server players, all you people, okay, not private server, it wasn't intended that way at the moment, but I was like, all you people that are going to come back and play classic, dude, you're not going to play vanilla. You never played yeah. vanilla. Vanilla was a whole different world. Um, I was a free, and I, I come, I, I proved my point with my level 40 warrior who was wearing, who was using the serpent strike mantle, crush his back. I had a tiger, tiger strike mantle on my back. Sorry. Yeah, it was serpent strike uh, mace. From Wailing Caverns. From Wailing Caverns, yep. the one with the uh, snake shape. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then I put that stupid helmet on from Nomergan and a Tiger Strike mantle I found in Stranglethorn Vale. And, and like, you should really sell that because it's such a twink item, a level 29 yeah. agility stamina. You know, and I'm level 40 and I'm rocking around wearing all this crap. And like, <laughs> this was vanilla lap. This, yeah. this will not happen in classic, you know. And I got so pumped up and, um, it got a lot of hate initially. I had more dislikes than likes. It was cracking me up because I think all the people that were playing at the moment or looking at videos at the moment were more of the BFA players, all the, not, mm. not the original players. You know, at the time I started, I think the hype was really low back in December. Um, right. It, it really was. I mean, everybody right was Right after uh, Blizz, uh, BlizzCon. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty so, bad. So it, and in and, and these last two months, dude, the hype is back up. I think, I think yeah. everybody's back on board and my like ratio went up. <laughs> over the dislike ratio once all the og players came back in you know yeah. i realized what i was talking about yeah. but then it wasn't just that video some other videos people started telling me or they, or they tell me like and they tell me all the time it's fine it's whatever it is what it is but they're like you didn't play vanilla you don't know what you're talking about you don't know end game you don't know all this stuff and i'm like dude there was a day all the way up until i started making content i used to wear the badge of honor because I played back in 2005. I mean, I was proud of it, dude. I had this swag on. Dude, I played in vanilla. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't raid in game. But mm -hmm. dude, I experienced something that you never even touch. Like, and you'll never taste it. It's impossible to taste it, dude. I used to wear this thing like a badge of honor on my back, man. Everywhere I went, I was like, yeah, dude, I, I played vanilla. Yeah, dude, I. And ever since I started making content, I'm like, dude, all these private server players. I'm not, I'm not, uh, and, and hear me out. I'm not calling you guys out. I'm just saying, everybody's saying, I, I never played vanilla, and they're acting as if they've played vanilla because they played private service for the last five years, right. which, you know, cool. And, and yes, you're 10 times more knowledgeable than me about vanilla, but like, you'll never feel what I feel. And I, and the I, experience. And, and yeah. you, you will never experience that because it was 2005, it was 2004, before social media was out. That's a huge thing. You know how addictive. Yeah out of social media nowadays world of warcraft was so addictive they called it world of warcraft for a reason mm -hmm. yeah it, 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 it people won't died be world because of, of plus, because of world of warcraft <laughs> yeah yeah it yeah. won't be world of mm -hmm. warcraft in 2019 because of the timing we're already desensitized i talk about it if you put a nine-year-old kid in front of wow today in front of classic wow today he will not feel what i felt as a nine-year-old kid Absolutely. in 2005 because he's I had agree. an ipad in front of his face since yep. the age of two yep. and yep. and the other thing is and, I, and I, I flex this every once in a while. I was nine years old whenever I touched World of Warcraft in 2005. First of all, this game is so addictive uh, in the time period. And you, you talk, you hear, there's countless stories of people quitting their jobs and people dying over this thing. Like you said, killing themselves. I mean, getting so wrapped up in this game. I was a nine-year-old kid and I got a taste of this. Listen, I have a seed planted in me, guys. And I, and I talked about it. Like an alcoholic is always an alcoholic. An alcoholic never gets over it. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody that's addicted to drugs, they never get cured. I mean, they're always, they always have this impression on them. A nine-year-old kid, dude, I got this. And, and, and the reason I'm stressing this is because I remember every grade in grade school, since fifth grade to 12th grade till high school, every single grade I remember daydreaming in class and just being like, man, yep. I wish I could, I wish I could play vanilla. I wish I could be there day one and i wish i was old enough to understand how amazing this game could have been and i and i would daydream dude i've dreamed about this for 12 years 10 years now 12 wow. years i don't know i mean I, and 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 i talk about how i've got this impression and no one else can no one else has yeah. I, I feel like i'm so passionate about this game even if you've played it on private servers you didn't play it in 2005 you don't have this love for the game like i got the love for it and 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 I, I like to flex that every once in a while just to. <laughs> but, but yeah, I I think I hit level forty five in vanilla. I didn't hit level cap till Wrath of the Lich King. Not even Burning Crusade. I remember in Burning Crusade, I got to 
what's the blue place? It's not. I don't want to say Zanger Marsh. Zanger Marsh. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it is Zanger Marsh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got there leveling up. And dude, leveling was still tough in Burning Crusade, and I was like, "Yeah, this, man. especially when it first came out." Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah, and and I was like, "Screw this!" I rolled a new character, so I didn't hit level cap till Wrath of the Lich King. I didn't raid in vanilla and BC, mm-hmm. but uh, man, I know I the first time I got my level forty mount, I remember it cracks me up, and I made this analogy um, in one of my videos. Yeah, I didn't walk around flexing my tier two gear in front of all the noobs in Iron Forge, you know. But whenever I hit level 40, I kid you not, I ran to Elwyn Forest and I was flexing in front of all the low levels, running over the <laughs> dude, between between Red Ridge Mountains and Goldshire, dude. I was running by people and taunting them and just like, dude, look at my 40, look at my 60% speed mount. I mean, it was hilarious. And so I feel like I, I still I still experience yeah. the same game everybody else experienced, even though I yeah. didn't get to end game. Yeah. You see, like I really, I really, you know. I appreciate what you said there because a lot of people don't realize, you know, back in vanilla, a very small, small, small group of people did the end game content at the level that people do end game content today in retail, right? I'm talking or about in private a, service. You know, yeah, exactly. Or in private service. So in private service, it's a lot more readily available. There's a lot more people who do MC every week, who do BWL every week, who do right. ZG, who do Max Ramis. When WoW was out in vanilla, a <laughs> lot of people, I would say close to 80, 90% of the people were casual noob type players who really were still just experiencing the world and getting used to the world. And and like you said, there was no social media back then. WoW was the social media for us. We went on there and had fun with our friends, did dungeons. Like yeah. I would do things in game. That I could have done in real life, literally just hanging out outside of a city, talking to people for hours on end, dueling. Yes. Like I, the, I had nothing else on my mind. Right. Maybe we do a couple of BGs. Maybe we do a ZG at the end of the week. But that was it. The rest of the time was spent experiencing the the world and the le- and, and either leveling and like time was so slowed down mm-hmm. compared to what it is like now on private mm-hmm. servers. Like. You know, everything feels like a rush nowadays, especially on private servers where, you know, in that, that's how they, they, they produce to come out a lot quicker. But like you said, man, back then it was a totally different experience and we will never recapsulate that. It will never be able – as much as classic, <laughs> as much as they can – and the other thing is when we were playing, WoW was – I'm not going to say that private servers are not alive in the way – in the sense that Vanilla was, but it, it had a pulse because – it was constantly changing. You had path progression, right? You had all these progressions, all these things changing. Yeah, you know, yeah, in retail, uh, I mean, yeah, on private servers, they try to do that by mimicking the the item, the item, the itemization, and the the patch progression with the raids. But when you had different patch notes coming out with class balance every couple yeah. months or so, with class balancing, with new abilities, with abilities changing, with counts changing. The game was so much more alive. Right. And like I said, you know, I would spend hours upon hours just bullshitting, doing stupid things that I would never spend time <laughs> on 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 uh, private service today. So, like, you so know, oh. yeah, no, and I was going to yeah. say, I was just thinking this today, how weird it was because people always say in current rock, in uh, retail while well nowadays, what do you do? You sit around in the city and you wait for your queue. You sit yeah. around in the city. You sit around in the city. Dude. I sat around in the city and wall jumped for hours on end. <laughs> yeah, you know, getting underneath the wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Experience in the game. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I, I honestly spent more time in the city sometimes than questing out in the world. I didn't want to yep. go out in the world and do quests and kill things by myself. The city was so mm-hmm. alive. Yeah. The auction house, people running between the auction house and the bank and Stormwind. Oh, and – and, and, and wall jumping, dude, I t- and I talk about this, man. Wall jumping was so cool. And it's it's such a shame because that was like 50% of my game time in <laughs> Vanilla WoW. I kid you not. I spent 50% of the time wall jumping. Predominantly in the cities, there was this one place, you know, in Stormwind, as soon as you walk in, you take a little left. And before you go around the corner, that whole wall. Oh, yes. Scale, dude. Oh, and yeah. Course, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was always like. Dude, what's at the top of Stormwind? Yeah, I wonder uh-huh. what's up there. Yeah. Like, and and, and I'll, I'll tell the wall you, next to the bank. Too. Remember the wall next to the bank? Everyone we go up to, like one yeah. 
Yeah, uh, behind on the left of the fountain. Yeah. And so, so you know, and we're I, I got I got I can talk so much into this, and I want to because 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 wall jumping is something we're not going to experience in Vanilla WoW, and dude, that it yeah. was um that was such a rich experience for me. I want to talk about the first time I was introduced to it, and I I, I think I remember someone was like, hey. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in Stormwind one day, and I see in general chat, I'm under Stormwind. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm like, same thing happened to me. Same thing yeah. happened to me. I'm like, under Stormwind. And, I, and I'm like, I whisper to the guy, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, come here. And I'm like, oh, you know, okay. He's like, I yeah, got some candy here. for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was here, he a know. priest? <laughs> I, I don't know what he was. You, you guys know, it was to the right of the inn in Stormwind, yep. that little torch. You jump on that torch, and then uh, we're standing right next there. next to the arch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, he goes first, and he falls, and I'm like, he disappears, and I'm like, yeah. what is that? I jump, and all of a sudden, I just see gr- like the brown world, and I'm like, whoa, and fall, and just like looking around, like, what is this? This is a whole new world. I spent days, literally days, under Stormwind, and then <laughs> I remember. So you know, there there were holes where you would fall, right? Yes. I went into one of those holes and I, I accident, you know, you I don't think it was an accident. I think I tested it and I was like, I wonder what this will be. Mm-hmm. So I jumped. <laughs> oh, I'm I jumped. stuck. Dude, my guy got, yeah, he was stuck yep. free falling. For out, I couldn't quit the game. You I couldn't do anything. You can't because you're falling. Yeah. 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 I, I, I couldn't do anything. And, and this was, I had a few moments like this and this was back whenever game masters were alive and game masters uh-huh. were scary whenever someone typed in the text reported i mean your heart dropped my life it was, was like it was like something called the cops on you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. someone if someone put reported i mean and so whenever i get free fall stuck the first thing that comes to mind i'm like oh I'm no yeah. i'm gonna need to talk to a game master and he's gonna find out he's gonna find out what i did and i'm gonna get banned <laughs> for glitching you know <laughs> And so, Dude, it's so crazy. it just fell to pieces whenever I got stuck free falling under the world. And and and, and I'm I'm just I, I just love reliving and talking about it. Dude. I, and and so I wall jumped everywhere I went, every zone. One of my favorite things to do was those little tents, the red yeah. tents. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. You jump in yeah, front yeah, yeah. and I'd stand and then, up, you know, yeah. flex. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere, dude. I, I, I had a ton of different places. Well, I love the ones in Orgamar that yeah, that everyone used to get on top of and all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, so yeah, dude, I, I wall jumped from from then on. Every zone I was in, every little inn, every little city, I wall jumped everything. And then so people walking by, I'd just be like, Hey, look at me, you know, I'm I'm standing <laughs> up here. You can't get up here. And uh it was just such a big part of the game for me. It was um, as a kid, and of course, as a kid, it, for some reason, that was more interesting than questing and leveling up. Just because I mean, I was 16, 17 at the time, and I loved it as well. <laughs> let, let me just say, yeah. I had the exact same experience, which is amazing. I literally got, it was either a whisper. Yeah, it was a whisper. He whispered me and said, hey, dude, if you want to see underneath Storm, and I'm like, what? I'm like, you got to be fucking with me, right? <laughs> yeah, Do you so, want to see what's uh, underneath my trench coat? <laughs> yeah. So literally, it, it was a human. And I remember, like, and, and I, I'm a night off, so I have the jump, right? And he's like, follow me. Do exactly what I do. So we start right. going up, going up, going up. And then the same thing happens. He disappears. And then I do the next jump, and then I'm down there as well, dude. And it was so awesome exploring that. And guess what I did after that? I became the guide. I started showing yes. people how to get down there yes. and what to do. And same. like, same. Yeah. And what's so cool is like, and just the exploration of that, like, and things like that, finding how to get outside the map, you know, swimming into these other sections as a druid, doing all these cool things, like, that happens so often, and it was such a big part of the game. And I feel like those kind of encounters <laughs> where people would whisper you and say all this, the fact that the game was new and there was still so much to be discovered sparked these these conversations and people talking to each other. Because nowadays on private services, as much as you try to emulate uh, classic and vanilla, the feeling and, and the camaraderie, the socialization, it won't be, it will, I don't think it'll ever be to the extent that actual vanilla was because everything was still new. You were exploring things together. There was still so much of an aura of mystery at the, you know, but, was but I think end. we're missing, we're missing one key aspect here. So I, I think you're right, Def Camp, but we're missing one key aspect. What about the people who never played that are kind of coming into the game? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, so uh, right. I, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think that for people like us, Maybe we're a little, not jaded, but I think we're a little, uh, we're taking advantage of the fact that we know so much about the game already, and we're so goal-oriented when we do log in now, right. 
You know what I mean? You want to do something, yeah. right? You're like, I want to level, yeah. or I want to raid, or I want to do this. And I think there's going to be people like you, Grace. Maybe they'll be nine and ten years old who's, who's going to have n- not the same experience, maybe right. a similar experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, that's true. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I I could see that. I could see that happen. And and talk. I remember looking at the map, um, in the southeast part of the map. You know, southeast the Stranglethorn. There's that big Naga character. You know, holding the sword or whatever. Yeah. And I remember yeah. thinking, is there a Naga monster in the corner of the map? Like, if I were to swim out there, am I going to see some huge boss? Oh, you mean like uh, the art on the actual mini map yeah, itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so exactly. Just, and then you would you would like see that. like islands in the distance. You're like, can I get to that island? You know, oh, then yeah, you would yeah, die yeah, fatigue. Those islands, yeah, yeah exactly. And then you would just die because you're like, oh shit, I went too yeah. far. You know, something right. like that. Yeah, but, yeah. but I want to comment on what you said about like the classic uh, community because like. It's rough. It's rough. It can be rough to be a content creator sometimes, dude. Because like you put your opinion out there, and you you know that's your fault, right? That's our fault. We we decided to do that. Sure. And um, but some of the responses you get are just fucking ridiculous. And it's like you know people cursing yeah. you out, and I'm like, dude, you know, of course, but it's I just, a small majority. Yeah, of course, I just, delete, I just delete was... those. But but at the same time, it's like you know, it's like my, I have one rule on my channel. My my rule is this: I will leave your comment on my, on my. I don't care how much you curse, as long as it's constructive. If you just say, you know, go f yourself, your comments getting deleted, dude. That is, that's not bringing yeah. anything to my comment section. Do you know what I mean? Uh, if you say you're an effing idiot, and here's why, fine, yeah. I'll leave the comment. You know what I mean? That's right. that's my your opinion of yeah. why I'm an idiot, and yeah. not just yeah. that I'm an idiot. Yeah. Like, so it's okay. so it's like a monkey say that. we we, we just put up a video about class balancing. Of course, people are gonna are going to have different opinions than us. You know, part of our there's a huge, there's a there's a big element of subjectivity in our rankings. We did use parse data and stuff like that, but when you Absolutely. but we, but we filled that in with subjective, yeah. and you're going to have different opinions. But it's good to have people talking, and that's the most important thing. Is like we want mm-hmm. people to talk, we want people to share ideas. You cannot Absolutely. live in an echo chamber, and that's the the biggest thing. Is like I hate was like people. Absolutely. If, as soon as you question no changes, people flip out, and it's like, do you real? Mm-hmm. If you're not comfortable in your stance and you can't defend your stance. It should, doesn't exist. You know, you have right. to be able to defend your stance in a public forum, right? So right. I just want people to talk. When I invite a tea time mm-hmm. on my thing, I don't agree with anything. I don't agree. I hope right. that WoW Token doesn't come in. I hope that uh. classes aren't balanced. And I hope there's no end game changes. But he has his right to say it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So mm-hmm. that's the thing. It's like yeah. people just get so rabid. And sometimes. people's opinion changes. And a lot of times something that you think now will not be the same a year from now, a day from now, two hours from now. Right. You know, and the thing that a lot of people, uh, I think, fail to, you know, um, when someone puts you know their opinion out there, it's their, just their opinion. It's not a fact. It doesn't mean like you know the ranking system we gave. We gave our reason why. So you know, for example, like we said, you know, Paladins in PVE, we gave them a six. Right. You know, and even though they are the best healer, we. Uh, um, deducted points for the fact that you're pretty much pigeonholed into only healing in PVE sure. as as paladin. But sorry, despite yeah. having other options as well, right? That's the thing. You have other options, yeah, right? But they are viable. Like, if we gave, say, we gave paladins a nine in PVE and gave warriors, say, a, a nine or a ten, so how is that fair when literally, like, the warrior can do tanking? Uh, can tank better than you know any other class and DPS better than any other class. So they have two different options they can do when Paladins really have one option. You know, one that interact system. And like for some people, if you're just planning on healing, then put that in your equation. Don't even think about the 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 ret or or the uh, or the tanking part of it. Think about just the healing. We talked about how you know Paladins are probably. In my experience, in my opinion, the best healers, the most mad efficient healers in the game. And it's, you know, I think what people have to, to realize is like, just because someone's opinion differs than you or, or might be a little bit different, doesn't mean that, you know, you're wrong, I'm wrong, he's wrong. Right. Opinions are like buttholes, everyone has them. Some of them stink, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's what it is. Right. Well, and they all, they the all great... technically, they all stink, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, they all do stink. <laughs> but, the, but the great thing about, like, for, for the most part, about the WoW community, I will say, for the most part, I'd say a large part of the community is very, very um, uh, willing to listen and willing to hear people out. Absolutely. There are, yeah, there is the small majority who is very stuck in their way. I'm sorry, small 
um, minority who's very stuck in their ways, who, you know, a lot of times are just trolls or people who think sure. they know a lot right. about the game. And, you know, people like you said themselves who maybe have played private servers and think that they know everything about Vanilla WoW, even though they, they didn't start playing until sure. Wrath of the Lich King or Kata or whatever. But, you know, and that doesn't mean that someone, just because they played all Vanilla, that, you know, doesn't necessarily make them better than anyone else. You know, right. we're all experiencing this game and we're all coming to play this game that we love. And, Absolutely. you know, let's try to focus around that. And, and like, what I want to do is, like you said, Meldron, there are going to be people new to the game. I want to mm. be able to help those people and and try to make their experience somewhat sure. similar to my experience. So maybe I can live somewhat vicariously through them having that, that experience. Because I will never, like you said, have that experience of, you know, what's underneath Stormwind or underneath Odomar again, unless they do some stuff in the game and it's mixed up or whatever. Right. But, like, there's a lot, a lot of that, ash, that, uh, that essence of mystery won't be there for me this time around. So, you know, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. And, and, and yeah. I can maybe experience that through helping someone else or experience right. something different this time around, which is something else. So it's really cool. I can maybe do next time this time around when last time I had no chance of dreaming of ever doing that. And I might have – it's yeah, it's going to be a different experience, but I might have just as great of a time doing that as I did before. So, so that's the cool thing. Yeah, yeah. Talking about mm-hmm. classic wild community. Yeah, yeah. And I, and, and I, and I, I love the people that do no changes. And, and I understand simple um, – and there's a lot of controversy behind this and that. The biggest thing that I that I'm up for, like you guys said, is being willing and open to change um, continuously. And 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 here's the other thing: whatever I say, whatever other people say, it's not going to influence what Blizzard's yeah. going to. You know what I mean? Like they don't care. I'm, we're just voicing opinions. It's cool. I love to speculate. I'm going to be voicing my opinion on certain things away. But okay, so I was thinking about this: the classic WoW community. I think there's going to be a surge. There's going to be a shock um, of how new the game is going to be to people. Like you said, you know, you're not going to have that same experience. Well, dude, some of the biggest people, you know, most of the information that's being portrayed right now um, are are people that have played private servers in the last five years. People that know everything about the game and people that whenever they get into classic, they're going to rush to 60. They're going to raid. They're going to get the best gear. They're going to be playing a completely different game than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And and what they're preaching right now is a completely different game than what everybody's going to experience. And I think everybody's in for a shock come classic because I, I almost want to, you know, I beg to differ. Like, you not having that same experience. I'm intentionally going to take it slow. I'm going to roll Druid. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to I'm going to experience the game. I'm going to run every I'm going to run through every single dungeon leveling up. Um I'm even going to do two, three, two or three man dungeons with other druids just to get that same feel, that same excitement. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of things that we can do to kind of experience and feel that same version again. Um, But yeah, yeah. it's just, it's interesting that classic wild community just, uh, I think the community as a whole is shocked because not everybody's going to min max and not everybody's going to rush to 60 and just raid. Um, There's going to be a lot of majority will be casual. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people coming back that aren't the private server crew. Yeah. You, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta think. Let's see how many people right now are playing on the one called LH. How many? Do you, how many do you think total accounts they have? What do you think? Well, let's give an estimate. Matt Def Camp, what do you think? Uh, you talking about the server that LH. we play on? Yeah, LH. Yep. Mm-hmm. How many? Uh, I occasionally see the seven to eight. Like I'm talking about total like... accounts that actually play on that server. Not not at a time. I'm talking about total. Ten thousand. Total. Oh. Do you think there's t- only 10,000 accounts? Oh, accounts created? That are active, that actually log um, in once a week. Probably like, oh, probably like 11, 12,000. I'd there. say probably around 50K, but yeah. that's what I think. How much you say? 50,000, I'd say. 50? No, 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 no. I don't know. The, the active, they log no. in at least once a week? Absolutely. I think. No. Okay, no, well, okay. Let's say, let's say it's between... Let's say, 14, 10, 000, let's say think, between ten. Let's say between ten to thirty. Yeah, let's just max, say because Nistari's had a million accounts act- created. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. okay. Maybe, right. maybe, um, maybe, yeah. Maybe. So, yeah, okay. Um, so let's just think. Let's say. Let's say. Let's just say twenty k. Sure. How many people do you think are going to come on classic? Play classic. Oh, millions, I think. So it's fair to say that most of the people that are coming back have never experienced vanilla WoW on a private server. I think. <laughs> I think. So it's going to be a totally different dynamic. 
Totally and different cool. dynamic. Not only that, but being away from the game for so long, I will say, from my experience alone, okay, I guess I hadn't played classic, or I will say even the <laughs> classic experience, I'll talk about like BC, you know, Rara, but, you know, most primarily vanilla. I hadn't played it in over a decade from when I came back mm-hmm. to uh, private service. And Melder would be a testament to this. It was a shock when I came back. I'm like, wait a minute. You can't use stomach stones? That's right. Totally forgot about that. Totally forgot. You know, I totally forgot about shift, uh, shift, um, click loot. I totally forgot about so many little things. But it, it's like riding a bicycle. It starts to come back. But it's a shock initially. It really is a shock. And a lot of people will experience that shock. And I think it, it'll be good. It's a good thing that people are going to have that shock. It's very good. Yeah. And I also think that, like you said, there's – but the majority of players are going to be casual players, just like it was in vanilla. And see, the big difference is the casual player base in retail today, they are not going to be doing the same things they do in retail than the doing classic, right? In retail, the casual player base does dailies, they do LFR, they experience the rating in, that, in those ways. But the casual player base in classic might not ever step into a raid. You know? Right. That's, sure, and that's absolutely. okay. The, <laughs> leveling, the leveling experience in Classic WoW, yeah. like we showed in our video, we believe is just as big as the end game experience and as the PvP experience. Yeah, that's why we it's added great. it in. That's why we added people were like, why did you add in leveling? Yeah. Have you ever we played think, Vanilla WoW? <laughs> leveling <laughs> is huge. It's we huge. believe that those three aspects are pretty much equal because there are people out there and there are a lot of people out there who literally only play classic just a level because they love the leveling experience. And it takes a while. And guess what? People are going to log on. They're going to level. And they're <laughs> going to do dungeons with their friends. They, they might get to level 50, level 60, whatever. Right. And then they might create a new character. But that might take them months to do that. Right. And that's great because that is what the classic WoW experience is about. Most people who played in vanilla, like myself, did only that. Yeah. And Same. I did a handful of raids, and I PvP'd a lot, but the leveling process took me the most part of my WoW career, of my dude, WoW career. Dude, it cracks me up. My brother, We whenever we talk about Classic WoW, he goes, dude, I spent months in the Barrens. Months. Mm-hmm. I spent two or three months in the Barrens, dude. Like, It's definitely yeah. doable because it's freaking huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I think that's what when, – when the private server um, – and there's nothing wrong with this, but the sure. private server community – looks at classic and tends to think that, you know, okay, we're going to do what we did in private. Service. We're going to, we're going to level. We'll have four days, five days played level. And then we'll, we'll have any, yeah, you might have that in classic, but I think, but it, like you said, it's going to be a shock because most people will not have that experience. Yeah. I, like you said, I also want to take my time leveling, but I do, however, want to have, like, I want to have the best of both worlds. And I don't know if I'll be Absolutely. able to do this, but I, I would love, I would love to have my priest as my, Endgame raider who I can experience the rating with, you know, do MC when it's out, do WL. Uh, I want to, I want to do, you know, um, hopefully get into Nax and do AQ and you know do all those things. And then I also want to have alts that I just level with and have enjoy the level experience. And this is what I do now on private on the on the you know those things that I do on those servers. You know, Melron and I just made alts and I'm having I'm playing a shaman. For the first time ever, a vanilla shaman, and I'm loving. Never thought I'd love shaman as much as I am right now. Sure, I'm absolutely. having a fucking blast, dude. And that's what it's all about. Because just because your experience is all PvP or or all PVE endgame doesn't mean that the majority of people are probably are going to just have the leveling experience as their main experience. And that's why we did those three things as the main thing. Because when it comes down to it. A lot of people are going to be playing Vanilla WoW for the leveling experience, for the for the socialization, playing Dungeons with friends, and doing PvP, and may never even touch a uh, set foot into a into a raid. And that's great. That's awesome. That's it's your experience. Do what you love. You know, do what yeah. makes you happy. And there's so many cool things you can do in Vanilla. So yeah, they, they're and 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 while we're on this topic, and I won't get us too far off topic, but. It's something I, I'd put in one of my most recent videos because Taladril pointed it out. I talked to him one night for a while, and he pointed out, you know, and I, I was basing that video, no changes, whatever, whatever, off of um, Ian Kaza, Hazakostas or whatever, saying 
They want to create the most authentic vanilla experience. And Taladro pointed out, well, don't put MC and Anixia out at launch. Mm -hmm. If you want to recreate an authentic vanilla experience, don't don't put rate even though they MC and Anixia, I, th I think both of those rates were yeah. released on launch day. You wouldn't put them on launch because absolutely no one rushed to the end game and rated like that. That that wasn't in anybody's mind, and um, it's it's just an interesting thought. I won't get us too to off topic, but no, it's a good thought. Yep, yeah, it's a good thought. Like like. Would, would that just tear people apart? Would, would that just be too wild to go against the I norm? I think it'll be interesting to just say we're, we're, we're not putting it out for a month. Just imagine yeah. that. We're not putting it out for a yeah. month. It'd be and awesome. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I, I, it, Taldril is amazing. I mean, what's a month? Really what's a month? When things, you think about how long like, we've been waiting for this yeah. fucking game, yeah, what is a I month? Know. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. And I, but, you uh, know, people are gonna, people are gonna lose it on that. But like, yeah, they will. Month. But I, I honestly, I think you know, just yeah, let it come out launch. But you know, for the most part, because it really doesn't matter anyway. Because most people won't be doing MC within the first sure. month anyway. There are gonna be maybe one or two percent of people who will, you know, they'll rush. They'll get, they'll get as much as gear as they can. You know, hopefully, Dire Maul won't be out of that patch yet, so you won't even have Dire Maul, Dire Maul, Maul gear yet, which means. You're going to be missing out on a lot of your pre-raid BIS for a lot of classes. And, um, you know, it's going to be even more difficult for MC. That's great. Like, I think, you know, yeah, have MC come at launch and, and Ani. But the thing is, a lot of people aren't going to be doing it within the first month, like I said. So, oh, yeah. to oh. me, it doesn't matter as much because I think it's it's going to be retreated a little bit. Of course, there are going to be those people who rush and do that. And, right. You know, but let them have their fun. Let them do what they do. Let other people have their fun. But uh, Taladril is amazing at make like like he's so good at making oh, me rethink him. things that i, I thought i was i was like oh yeah i you know definitely need world buffs and classic buffs. And he's <laughs> like well do we because this this and i'm like dude you're you're right and I'm like he just totally made me re i mean and and taladril let me just say he's no changes but he's no changes and he also wants to try to make the classic wild experience you know as much as it can be and sometimes I wouldn't say he's no changes. Change. He's changes in the spirit of the vanilla experience. That, that's what I meant. He's he's like, but he's not he's not really like pro changes in the for, in the sense. Okay, of, he doesn't oh, want he LFR wants LFR in the game. Of life, yeah, all this okay. kind of stuff. Like, yeah, he, no, he, there's degrees of no changes, changes, right? There's right. degrees. What of I mean is, the changes that he promotes for are changes that would make the sense of would make vanilla feel more of a vanilla experience. Yeah. Is what I'm so saying. so well, yeah. I, and I, I don't want to talk on his behalf. So whatever. Yeah, I don't want either, so I don't want to say that. Is it what, what he said? Bad, but but right. a big thing that he said was releasing content to where it's all progressive. And and that's not the authentic mm -hmm. vanilla experience because because he talked about, he pointed out the Dungeon point five set. You know, mm -hmm. that, that was for yeah. people that didn't raid but quested. They wanted epic gear. Um, but, it, you know, it came out in a later patch, but it wasn't better gear. Right. Well, he talked about progressive mm -hmm. itemization. You know, every piece of gear that comes out, and maybe that's too much of a niche situation. You know, that might be too niche. Um, and that, that wouldn't be an instance where uh, newer gear coming out progressively would be better than prior gear. But he pointed out, like, why wouldn't you make gear that come out in raids always be progressive? Like, even if that wasn't the authentic vanilla experience, why wouldn't you fabricate that? Why wouldn't you do that? Mm. I'm not. I'm not saying that's what Taladro said, but mm. and, and that would make more sense to me. I think, and I don't have any problem with that. I don't understand all the repercussions completely, but like, yeah, and you know, yeah, and, that, and that's the only thing. Like, you know, and I, and I don't think there's, but when it comes to other changes and other things, the reason why I tend to go heavy no changes is because, just like I said, because there always tends to be unforeseen consequences, right? Sure. You sure. know, so many of the changes that we thought were going to be good changes that came out in BC and Wrath and all these things. Oh yeah, all going to be great and this and that. Oh, but it totally destroyed the social aspect of the game. Right. Like that was kind of an unforeseen consequence. People didn't think that was going to happen. Right. But, you know, like hindsight's 2020, you can look back now and be like, oh, yeah, that's the thing that fucked that up. Like, that's the thing that fucked that up. But when like, we were living through it, we had no idea, you know? Like, dude, dude, flying? Okay, I was cool with flying, but whenever they used it to Azura, the original world to Eastern Kingdom oh, yeah. in Kalimdor, like, Catholic, I was yeah. so pissed off because I was like, now I know what's at the top of Stormwind. Now yeah. I know what like 
You just ruined yeah, the game. It does ruin yeah. the immersion. That's true. Because TBC yeah. was kind of okay because the game was built for flying. That that map was built for flying. There was right. regions right. that were only accessible with the flying mount, even though it killed world PvP. But that's another whole other argument. But yeah, yeah the uh, Outland was built for with flying mounts in mind. Northrend was Absolutely. built with flying mounts in mind. The classic world, even after the Cataclysm, really wasn't. Yeah. No, so man, that's it a good wasn't. point. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I, I um. And just the cataclysm, like when the world changed, I was not a big fan of that. And I know, you know, sometimes like with games, things need to change and things have to go forward. But seeing Ogremar is a new Ogremar and knowing that I will never, at the time, <laughs> see old Ogremar again, literally made me cry. Right? Same. Literally made me cry. Like he was I in was a corner. Like, he was in a corner like this, just like yeah, a single I was tier. like, I'll never see Ogremar again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, where'd Gavin go? Where is he? <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just like so many things that you fell in love with and so many things. Oh, my God, I, I had this this amazing experience right here, and now it looks completely different. You almost stripped that experience away from me in, 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 in a way, and that's why I think a lot of people are so – just ready for classic, you know, to, to bring back those experiences that they had. Yeah, they'll never be able to really relive them, but they'll be able to make new experiences and remember that and, and live and bring that essence, that thing that made classic so amazing and beautiful to bring that back and make it alive and share that with other people. And mm-hmm. also for people who never experienced the old world and to have them come in and experience it for the first time. I mean, that's got to be awesome. So, so people always talk about linear you know the the cataclysm the new world it's so much more linear now i mean mm. you know where to go they tell you where to go it's not yeah. it's one thing that people don't normally talk about is the fact that they changed higher level mobs in all these lower level zones there there are countless i mean i mean probably 10 to 12 zones in all the starting areas there's probably two for each starting area um as you level up you see skulls in your zone. Yeah. In my first encounter, I talked about it in one of my videos, was the, the gnomes and gnomergan. You yep. know, I was level five. And then old Icebeard, he was a level 10 elite, the first elite I ever saw. And he was cracking me up. Yeah, yeah. At Cataclysm, I came back. Um, in Cataclysm, I, at, after quitting in Wrath, I came back in Cataclysm. I maxed out. And I was like, huh, I want to go to, I want to go to gnomergan, you know, or, or, or to, uh, I want to go to Dunmoreau. And I want to go kill that stupid elite Yeti that killed me back in the day. And I rolled hordes, so I hadn't rolled alliance yet. And I went back there and I couldn't find I couldn't find where old Ice Beard was. I couldn't find his cave. And I was like I mean my heart broke at that moment. Oh I was my like, God. Yeah. Look yeah. Away. yeah. It's the same thing. Look away the when old he, world. Like exactly. where's old, old Ice Beard should be right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when you level Forsaken. Sorry, go ahead. Go oh, Peter's, yeah. please, no, please. No, it, yeah. It, it's the same thing. Um and then and then because I rolled horde and cataclysm and then I was like, okay, this doesn't really make sense. I'm going to make a gnome just like Jolly the Gnome Warrior back in the day. And I started in Gnomergan, and I was like, yeah, what? I was so mad. And and, and I just that, – that that was my that was my experience with the Chinese world of Cataclysm. Oh, did the gnomes get it back? Gnomes had a new uh, – they start in Gnomergan now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I Melderon <laughs> has literally never played Gnome. <laughs> I've never no, even like I never even put my mouse over a gnome to even like select. Yeah, I never, yeah. I, honestly, I haven't. It's just that's just my. Thing. Well, no, that's a lie because you had to have done that. <laughs> and you had to have looked at the stats and and all those things, so you at least for hovered what? over it before for the video about your options of the classes and all that. Remember? No, I didn't do options or classes. Oh, the, ba- oh, the banner, the, the banners. Banner I never touched it. I just looked at the banner. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, they never, they never put it over. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, I will say yeah. I did make a gnome. Um, to make a video that was kind of funny. That was it. Like, yeah. What, what were you saying about the Forsaken? So the Forsaken, when you level Forsaken, the Scarlet Monastery guys are like uh, 30-something yes. elites, right? Yeah, so and yeah. you're like level in your six. Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like running around and you're like, oh, what are these guys? What's the skull mean? And then like you yeah. aggro them from six miles away and they just won't yeah. hit you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that shit was insane, dude. <sighs> insane. And then you see Alliance running up to the summoning portal and you're like, why is this guy yellow? Mm-hmm. And then you go oh up and like God. try, yeah. and you go yeah. up and try to kill him, and this level right. like forty five just like yeah. fire blasts you. Yeah. Like, oh, I just died. How did I just die? Who is that guy? Right. You know these things that you know. It's just kind of crazy. It's but it's awesome. 
And that's what we have to experience. that's what we're looking forward to experience again. Yep. So real quick, so we transition before we before we close. So yeah. what what do you what's your what have you been doing, man? Like, what is your niche? What is your, what are you trying to like? Your content creation schedule has been insane the past couple of months. Yeah, and and what made you want to make content? Is yeah. It? Okay. Yeah. Um. So, I've been wanting to get on social media in the last two or three years. I just I I have been wanting to. I thought it was going to be some type of vlog series. It was going to be something stupid. Um. Something along those lines. I was going to get on. I was going to make YouTube videos and do my thing. Well. I've been want, I I guess I I don't I don't know if I've been wanting to make classic wow content forever because even whenever it was announced it didn't strike me like oh I should be making classic wow content right now mm-hmm. you know even though I love this game so much but then um so one of the biggest reasons <laughs> and and I'll be I'll be brutally honest why I'm doing this well well first of all I'm so passionate about it and I love and what I'm doing right now is the profession series and it blows my mind seeing all the items in every single profession and i mean it just yeah. i'm just like oh my gosh i didn't even realize alchemy had rage potions like as a warrior think yeah. about how like immersive that is to be crafting rage potions and you and you and how happy <laughs> that is dude popping a rage potion every other uh encounter yeah uh, and so i'm having a blast with making these videos like i mean it is because whenever and whenever i get into vanilla and professions and i'm like i don't know all the items in in every single profession. And honestly, I don't think anybody else does in the world either. Like even yeah. I like maybe 1% of the player base knows all the items and professions. Um, and so that, that's blowing me away. I'm having a blast with doing it. And I've seen everybody else do guide videos. I've seen every, and it, and it, it eats me up, dude. I'm just like, Oh, I could do that better. Or mm-hmm. I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I know what I, okay. This was the thing. Nobody's making the videos that I want there you go that's yeah. the key to content creation my yep, friend that make the, the videos key. that you yep. want to watch that's the thing yeah yep. I, I was sitting there like dude i i want to watch videos on this i want to watch videos on mm-hmm. this no one's making this why 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 and so me making these videos is satisfying that hole for me and um oh my goodness i like i said every single grade year i've been dreaming of this dude i have been Oh, if I could just play, if I had the capacity to play vanilla WoW and be there at launch, preferably go back in time in 2005, but you know, 2019 will work. I would kill, I would do anything for it. And, and just where I'm at in school, where I'm at in life, I'm married at the end of this year. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. That like, I'm seeing it as an, this is an opportunity for me to live my lifelong dream of playing vanilla WoW, like I've been dreaming ever since I was not. Um, and 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 content creation is kind of an outlet for that. Yeah. Now that's not the only reason I'm doing it. That's like I said, I'm doing it because nobody's making the videos I want to watch. Nobody's doing these things. And then it's so much deeper. Ever since I started making content, dude, it's so there's so much more. Like like the the vanilla. You know the community. I'm not too happy about it now, just because it's it's full of private server people and the people that are speaking out. And you know, I know it'll all work itself out, but like, it's not a community I would want to be a part. And it's not a community that, like we said, the casual player base. Nobody's latching onto that casual player base right now. Nobody nobody's creating a community for 90% of the players right now. And and I would, how awesome would that be if I could create a community for that player base? How awesome would that be an experience for them and for me? Um, regardless of money and a living, like that'd be badass, dude. That yeah. that would be cool. And I have an opportunity to do something like that. And so that that's that man, since I've started making content, it, it, it's so much more than oh, it's gonna be my living. I can work from home, yada yada. You know, and and dude, that's where it all starts. That, that that's everybody's motive is that at some point, but it's so much more than that. It is so much deeper than that. And um I am so excited because because I think I have really appealed <laughs> to that to that casual player base. I think yeah, I dude, really I think a you thousand have thousand subscribers people. in three months. Yeah. No, it's in fifty one days. Fifty one days. Yeah, fifty one days. Sorry, fifty one days. Guys, and it's twelve hundred. I don't know if you've ever yeah. tried making videos before and like started a new channel. Yeah. That is like unheard of in 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 my in sure. regards of things that we've heard 51 days a thousand subscribers dude you've been killing it you already are well on your way to creating that community like i said 
you know, yeah, you might have run into a few, um, you know, rough people here and there. But honestly, the classic WoW community as a whole is probably the best community out there. I mean, I will say it is the best I've been a part of. Of course, there's those small, you know, loud. Of course, it's a small majority that's loud. And sometimes they'll be, you know, whatever. But as a whole, the classic WoW community is an yeah, amazing Just remember, community. there's people out there who want to make you miserable. That's the thing you have to realize, yeah. right? Because yeah. they're miserable yeah. and they're jealous exactly. or whatever they're, they want to get into. People in misery love company. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people's highest point of their day is going online and go, hey, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get yeah. the, key, the keyboard warrior. <laughs> That's the highest point of their day. Yeah. yeah. The keyboard warrior. And yeah, absolutely. Just remember, you're the one who's putting yourself out there. And like you said, dude, the key to, to content creation is making videos that you want to watch. That is the key to content creation. Every time Melder and I make, Melder and I make a video, we're like, this is a video I would really like. The last one that we made together – I'm not going to just put out the Celebrus one, just put that on, but uh, the one before that, the um, with, with the ranking system, that, that was a, a thing that we wanted to make because we wanted to look at it and rank it ourselves. Yes. Like, hey, let's make a video of this. Yeah, we were, we were literally having a breakfast diner, yeah, at a diner. And with we a pen and paper. I yeah. loved it. Writing on a napkin, the numbers. And, I, and this guy behind me, Phil, he's staring at me. What the fuck is this kid talking about? Ranking, he's like the mage at rank four. Like, this guy, I didn't like... I'm like, yeah, this guy's no idea what I'm talking about. I wasn't having the time. You know, but yeah. do what you love, man, and the reps will come. It's already shown. It's already give you fruit of the labor. Thousand subscribers in 51 days. <laughs> That's amazing. You've been doing some amazing work. I've never seen someone who just started like two months ago who has such a long list of videos. It's amazing. It's amazing, man. Is there anything mm. else that you're working on? Don't give you out your secrets away. But is there anything other videos you'd like to talk about that you're working on currently? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's one thing. There's one thing I wanted to talk about. What is um, – well, nothing I'm necessarily working on. So I'll say what you're going to expect from me is I'm really going to buckle down on fashion video, and I'm also going to be streaming and trying to give people more, you know, FaceTime because I, I think people enjoy watching me for whatever reason. So I'm going to try and do Twitch streaming for an hour, two hours a day um, just to fulfill that because it takes all day to make a 10-minute video, and that's all I'm putting out right now. But you're going to see profession videos from me, and then I'm going to do like a preparing for classic WoW vlog series, which is which I'm really excited about because that's, of course, the videos I want to make. And I'm really interested in getting ready for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of reliving vanilla. So like, it, so I'm going to have those two style videos. Everything else I've done, I got to put it on the back burner because those profession videos are so deep, and they take so much time. I, I can't do anything else. But um, So I'll be streaming, making that classic WoW vlog and profession strictly for the next two months. I wrote it out. But yeah, before before I left, I wanted to talk about um, the most memorable thing in Vanilla WoW for you, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe I'll go last and let you guys say it. But um, I want to know your most mem. I'll go first because it may, um, one. It may be. Well, I'm gonna go with one because I mine's a little long. Well, it's not that long, but I already knew the top of my head as soon as he asked the question. I call it from I call it the Braveheart moment for me. Um, <laughs> I, I know it sounds a little crazy. I'm not probably what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm on my rogue, right? This is my first character in vanilla. I'm at Love Cats. Somewhat geared, right? And we get a we get, you know, I get a seal in uh trade chat um uh, looking for more raiding Ogremar. And I had never seen Ogremar before. <laughs> right? I never seen it. <laughs> I join the raid and I find out that we're one of four raid groups. Four raid groups. Raid <laughs> yes. All right? Okay. So, dude, we we, we ended up – I remember – so we get together. <laughs> and remember back in the day, you know, you had to ride everywhere on, on your horses Heck and on yeah. your mouse, dude. So we, we flew to – where was the closest place we had to fly to? I think we flew – oh, we went to Ratchet. Of course, yeah. we went to Ratchet. So <laughs> – of course, like not all of us met. We met outside of Ratchet. We actually met <laughs> in, in the Barrens, in like crossroads, going in, in that north where that uh, where that bridge is that goes. Because we didn't go. We didn't take the bridge that goes. We took the bridge that goes over Dortar into over the Barrens into Dortar, and then you have to go down the road to to Orgrimmar. So we went down the front gate. That was Shut our up. biggest mistake. Yes, the front gate because we had such balls because there were so many of us. We wanted <laughs> to go through the front gate, right? So we meet up, 
And all you see is every – so I was on like probably one of the first boats, right? And we <laughs> waited. We said everyone wait outside of Ratchet. So we we're going to wait. We go outside of Ratchet around to the bridge. We had this spot we were waiting on. So all of a sudden, every couple, every like five, ten minutes, you just see massive amounts of people coming because they're all coming from the boat from Rash. <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, and it's like, uh, dude, and we're all riding down the fucking barrens together. So we're riding <laughs> down the barrens. We get to the spot. We're like, okay, we got the all. It was like three and a half raiders, almost four. We got, we got the raiders together. Let's go. Dude, I was running so, I mean, it was lagging so bad. So many people. But I, I took – I mean, you look and there's just a sea of alliance. There's so many of them on your horses, on their rams, and mechanic riders, on their, on their um, tiger mounts. And it's just all in the back. I'm like, oh, my God. And on the way, we see, like, little low-level guys who are just staring at us. I'm like, yeah, we're about to fuck the city up. Like, I've never seen Ogremar before. Never seen it. I've never been there before, right? So we were coming down that, that – uh, we came through – not through the ravine – but yeah. we came um, around the ravine where that like a little camp is, and then where the front gate. So like yes. right around there. So we're coming the little, there now. Uh, a little boar the... farm is. Yes, yes. So I see the front gates, right? I'm like, okay. And all of a sudden, the latency just spikes, right? <laughs> and I see a sea because I'm flagged at this point of red, a sea of red. <laughs> they were warned, and they were waiting for us outside <laughs> of Oregon. When I tell you. It was, seemed like hundreds of them. It was like the whole server was outside of Ogremar waiting for us. No. They knew we were coming. Dude, oh. the battle that ensued was the most epic, amazing thing I've ever experienced in WoW. We had a whole group, a whole, like our, our we, we, the, the one, this was one, and I think it was two guys who said the whole thing. He put all the rogues in one raid and told us to go find healers and casters and kill them. So you see all this whole group of stealthies and we like flank around the side oh and then we all opened up on all the healers and all of a sudden, boom! Dude, warriors started charging. You see lightning bolts. It was insane. But I gotta say the latency was so bad and I was yeah. like it was like, so boom, boom, boom finally, dude, like it, I gotta say, we got destroyed. We got destroyed we didn't even get through the front gates of our no. that's awesome the server crashed <laughs> uh, and finally the server ended up crashing but <laughs> we got a good probably 20 minutes of fighting outside of Ogremar and dude, I'm getting like hype and just, it was so amazing dude oh. like it was the most amazing thing and I had to call it the Braveheart mode because it literally feel like I was in Braveheart no. like this huge war Horde against Alliance, like them defending their city out front of their gates. You know, they're screaming and backslash yell and, and oh, yell. Man. You know, we're screaming like, for the Alliance, all this. And then, you know, and it was just like the, we all lined up too. We had our raids like lined up like this. And all of a sudden it was like, boom. And then you see our little contingent of stealthers went around the side, oh, found the healers, crazy. started opening on. Like the guy had a little strategy. Like he, he had everything ready and then he wanted to have like another group of people coming around the side. But we got destroyed. I don't know what happened. We got destroyed. It was the, it was the lag. Or the lag was horrible. But that's, um, that's epic. That I mean, that is my most epic moment in WoW history. Um, so I had to give that to you guys. Yeah, maybe one day uh, explaining the whole thing and, and yeah. talking about it and kind of like making a shit about it or something. Absolutely. But, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's my moment. Oh yeah. man, I don't think I can top that. Um, me <laughs> Jeez, I, I think the I mean epic. Yeah, I mean the leveling process memorable. was epic. Memorable. It doesn't memorable. have to be oh, memorable. Would definitely have to be. Yeah. Shrek moments. Whenever, yeah. whenever, I, whenever I put this question out, I was not thinking like that, and I never experienced anything that badass. Yeah. Like, mm. you just crushed what I'm about. To <laughs> I'm <think>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where we had this guy. His name's Shrek, and his that his oh, last yeah. name's it's his last name. We should, uh, hyphenated yeah. his last name, or whatever. Anyway, so we call him that, and. I don't know how this happened, but... It was a bug, I guess. Yeah, I guess it was a bug. So we were summoning him on the top of Black Rock Mountain. Not top. Where the summoning stone is, but not using the summoning stone, using the warlock. Right, obviously. Yeah. And we got him to... So he comes... So he's running on his mount, and we're doing BRD, and we summon we're him. We're near the chains. Yeah, we're near, we're the, near chains. Like the chain. Yeah. So he clicks the summoning, except... And they had this potato computer. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or what, but he comes Horrible out of the laptop, portal. Yeah. He's still in the, he's still in the 
in the loading screen. But we see his character come out of the portal on his mount somehow. On his mount. Indoors. Yeah. And he's talking. He's like, oh, hey, guys. And he comes out of the portal and just <laughs> dun, 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 rides right off the friggin' right off the cliff into the lava. Right into the lava. And, and I don't. And it's yeah. so funny because he's like he's, he's never loading been to BRD before. Never had his, no idea. Can what I was, can I finish Batman. his loading screen? His loading screen stops, <laughs> and he's in the lava. And he's like, "How the fuck did I get in the lava?" And we're like, "Dude, <laughs> and we're all we're all laughing." And then he couldn't find his corpse. He couldn't get back up. We had it was it was like an, a half hour of trying to get him back up back into his corpse. Oh yeah. So, but I don't understand till this day how he was mounted because that shouldn't be that shouldn't be possible. But he was. It happened yeah. back in the day. And yeah. Sometimes. It, yeah. That's the lava. Yeah. Yeah. But the same guy also um, was – so Def Camp and him are dueling in Hillsborough at <laughs> Foothills. And it's that – sorry, Alterac where the uh, internment camp is near Dalaran. Yeah. And, and they're they're uh, dueling there. And I think Def Camp was a priest and he was a mage. I think that's what it I was. I would just – I would duel him all the time because I knew he would lose. He was he'd horrible. Get, yeah. He would always get really upset. Yeah. So he, he lost up to bed. So, yeah. So Def Camp uh, feared him or something. And during the end of the fight, and he had dots on him. So the so the duel ended pretty far away from because he was feared out pretty far, and the duel ended pretty far away. Well, he runs into an aggro ranger, the bear, and so now you know when you lose a duel, you're like what one HP, right? So the, so yeah, the bear yeah. comes over and just goes Ruh, and kills him, <laughs> and he's like son of a, bitch. and he's like freaking out like, and it was so funny. So real His quick, same same guy. Yeah. This is in Wrath. We cleared Nax. We had him on. We had Nax twenty five on farm. He's never been in a raid. I was like, all right, Shrek, you're going to come into a raid. So he brings this mage, and he loves AoE. So he, we, we'd be fighting bosses, and he'd be just blizzarding and using nice. Arcane Explosion. And right. he'd run out of mana because he would just be AoEing yeah. everything. And then he would just <laughs> wand the whole rest of the fight. And it didn't matter because we had it on farm, so he's just wanding. Yeah. So in right. Discord, you hear, who's this retarded mage wanding through all the fights? <laughs> so I whisper him, and I say, listen, dude, that's my brother. He actually is retarded. Can you please, like... <laughs> You know, he's mentally challenged. Can you please not make yeah, fun yeah. of him? And the guy got so, like, he was like, I'm so sorry. And he, like, kept apologizing over and over and over again. Meanwhile, this guy's just, he's not. He's just an idiot. <laughs> so, but it's just, but I'll never forget that because, yeah. and, uh. And, and, like, he, like, there were times, like, he would play, and then he would stop playing, and then he started playing again in Wrath. He was like, dude, we gotta come back for yeah. Wrath. We gotta get so, geared up. Like, and then he goes in this raid. His lag was so bad. Like, everything would die, and then you see him arcing explosions <laughs> while everyone's looting. Yeah. Yeah. And he thinks he's yeah. killing everything. Yeah. And he's just arcing explosions and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Grace. What's yeah. yours? Yeah, no, and, and there's so many stories. You talk about all that stuff, man. There are so many memorable things. And as, as you guys were talking, I, I thought I'd take just little snippets of just rich, rich memories. And, and you know, I, I go down the line. You know, some of the things the first time I walked into Iron Forge and, and it's funny, I have this memory. Of, I, I don't know if I dreamed it or not, but it's it's not how it really is. But I have a memory of the first time I walked in where the battleground uh, Q leaders are where, you know, I remember the first time I walked into there or I think and I think I get uh, meshed together and I remember a different room in Iron Forge. But. I remember walking into the battleground area and just seeing people decked out in beastie armor. And um, the, the I was on Alliance, so whatever that last set is in the PvP set, they're wearing golden gear, right? Uh, uh, Grand Marshal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Grand Marshal. And I had a gnome, and I went in there once I was private. You know, I went and inspected, and I put on the gold gear and saw what it would look like. And I was like, oh, dude, one, one of these days I'm going to decked out in golden but dude the first time i walked into iron Forge battleground q area i mean it's just packed full of people mm-hmm. don't get that anymore oh that was mm-hmm. that was second to none like you can't that is pretty that. awesome yeah yeah um yep. wall jumping um i, I, I mean that, that that will always stick out to me um what but but the other thing i remember spending saturday mornings running through dungeons because that was the only game time the, the, that was the only amount of time that I, I had available to spend the time that it took to run dungeons, at least certain dungeons. You could, you could do um, dungeons in an hour and a half. Dead Minds was pretty easy. Even Dead Minds, dude, my mom computer pretty, pretty quickly because um, it, it took that long. But Wailing Caverns, dude, Wailing Caverns lasted 
because you'd get lost and, hey, did we complete the zone? Mm -hmm. um, Nomergan was huge. One of my most memorable, and and it, and it's it, it doesn't it doesn't equate. I've got a million different memory things. I could talk to you guys about this for days. But dungeons, I don't know why dungeons were so immersive to me, and that is the number one thing I'm excited about doing. Back whenever classic comes out, I'm doing all the dungeons. Um, I remember the first time I got to Sunken Temple in the Swamp of Sorrows. Oh my goodness! In the route that it took to get to the, to oh, get yeah, the yeah. entrance on you, what what is it? You um go down and the step, yeah, 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 yeah. pop up in a room and you're like, what well, you know, yeah. where am I at? Yeah, I'm in yeah. this temple in the yeah. middle of this water, floating, you know, in the middle of this island. Um, I go under and I come out, dude. We went into that instance and it was a Saturday morning. My uncle, um, and it was it was one two p.m. at this point. And he's like, hey, Grayson, I'm leaving. You know, you didn't hang out with me all morning. He didn't care. But, like, I spent all morning from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. We spent six hours in oh, yeah. Sunken Temple. Because, you oh, know, yeah. Sunken That's Temple. a long one, dude. Sometimes a long one. Yeah. Dude, Very dude and I swear, we, we'd keep running and it'd be like, didn't we already kill the mobs in this yeah, area? Yeah, yeah, Like, didn't we already? How, have we, how are there still <laughs> mobs here? Are they respawning? <laughs> no, dude. That's how much of a maze Sunken yeah. Temple was. And, and then... <laughs> Finally, I mean, we, we we literally spent six hours in there. Finally, we get to this big room, two dragons flying around. Mm -hmm. And then and we never woke up the sleeping dragon. I know mm. that for a fact. I don't I don't know the process. See, there's so much unknown in dungeons. I can't wait to freaking experience, you know. I'm going to make that dragon some temple. But one of the most memorable things is Duncan Temple for six hours one Saturday morning. And... um yeah, they, they just really cool. just dungeons dungeons hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. So I yeah. got one last question before we actually go. What, Grace for days. What is what does it mean? Yeah, the, the name. Does it mean like great great year? Is that what that means? No, no, no. Oh. It, it cracks me up. A lot of people reference that, and I'm gonna have the best name. Iron Man challenges, which I, I'm live. I'm I'm stoked about that. Mm -hmm. But um. It cracks me up. My my cousin Nick. I hope he's why I hope he ends up watching this, and he doesn't remember it. It's hilarious. And back whenever I was in fifth grade at the time, he we, they come down every summer from Massachusetts. We're in Texas, and he called me one day. He's like, "Grace for days," you know. And that's the only time I ever heard that name. It's the only time I was labeled it. Remember, I was looking for a YouTube name. I was like, "Dude, Grace for days." <laughs> called me that. My cousin Nick called me that back in the day. Like, it's, just, it. it's just a solid name. And my name's Grayson. That's why. That's my name Grayson. is Grayson. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't introduce ourselves earlier. That's yeah. the main reason why. And he he threw that out there. Hence the name Grace for Days. I love it. I thought I thought it was a reference to, like, gray items. Like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, they, like, right. you know, That's like, exactly what I, I like thought, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and see, I, I never thought about it like that. And people brought that up. You talk about gray gear? Dude. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely be doing an Iron Man challenge series um whenever class comes Hell out. Yeah. But yeah, that that that's so the you name. will have literally crazy on for days. So. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So that that's the name. That's so what it calls. where can people find you, Grace? I mean, I have all your links, but just in case I missed anything. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm posting on Instagram just because there's not a lot of hashtags in Vanilla Wild Classic Wild for all the content creators thinking about that. There's literally like eight thousand hashtags. So I'm yeah. putting my, every time you look up Classic Wild Vanilla Wild, you see my stupid face. So I post on Instagram. Um, I don't have a Twitter, but um, at YouTube, at YouTube and Discord, Discord panel, mm -hmm. if you want to talk to me personally, send me a direct message on Discord. That's the best way to contact me. And um, I'll be streaming soon. But Discord, if you want to see when I stream, all these things, Discord is the, Discord's so sweet, dude. I didn't realize how awesome this platform is. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad. I, and I'll take this opportunity just to thank everybody that has followed me up to this point and seen something in me. Dude, people are so helpful in the community. This guy set up my whole Discord page for me. Um, Light yeah. Reef. He's a beast, See? dude. Like, people, yep. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So, like, whenever I'm doing this stuff, it's not just it, – it's a community. Like, Yep. Absolutely, dude. And so, um, yeah, Discord's number one. YouTube, I'm trying to post three, four times a week just because I want to get all the professions done and then do factions and, and a couple other things that I've got in mind before the game launches, as well as fun videos. But then streaming, I'm going to do a lot of streaming probably in the morning um, just because it's not an occupied time right now and all the uh, 
sorry, Eastern people, everybody in Germany and in all those countries over there, it'll right. be midday instead of evening. So those are, those are the places you'll see me. Number one, Discord. Come join the Discord channel. That's the best place to join. Yeah, we'll, uh, have, we'll have your links in the description, and they're also right below your picture. So if anybody needs to yeah. see that, just go to the description, and we'll get you We'll get you going. So Appreciate it. Definitely. Dude, yeah. Dude, I had a blast with you guys. I, I've been we waiting, had a fucking been waiting to get to know you guys, and I loved it. I I, I hope I that one day you. I'm up in Philly because I'll definitely hit y'all up. That's where you're at. Hell yeah, yeah, we're in Philly. Yeah, definitely, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just actually met a, yeah. a friend of the channel, a patron. That was really awesome. We had dinner together. We had a great time. Yeah, yeah. it was really a lot of yeah. fun. And mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're definitely down to meet people because it's a great community. Yeah. and. Um, it's really awesome. So, guys, if you haven't checked out Grace for Days, it's Grace for Days on YouTube. Gotta do uh, it. He puts out a lot of content. He's very – he's himself. He doesn't – you know, you can tell it's genuine. It's it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. He does his research, and um, it's great stuff. And I really – and he also does a lot of opinion pieces, which is great. We need a lot more opinions pieces. Yeah. We don't need – we don't we need cheap mentality, so we need more opinions. Yeah, sure. That's really, really good. Yeah, um, absolutely. Also, I guys – yeah, go ahead, Def Camp. I just want to say, guys, yeah, absolutely – Pick up craze. I want to say first and foremost, this guy is passionate about wow. You know, you can see that it bleeds out. So definitely go give him a look. And when when I can't wait till you start streaming, man, because I think you're going to be an amazing streamer. So oh. definitely can do that, man. And I'll definitely come check you out. And uh, I just want to say, dude, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Oh. Had a great time. Really enjoyed it. And I look forward to working more with working more with you in the future, man. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, dude. And 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 I'll even I know we're you know, Brown knows in each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I really appreciate you guys. You I reached out to six people. You guys are the only guys that responded right away. Um big role models. You, you, Cargos, a couple other guys, really appreciate the way you guys handle your stuff and the way you're handling the classic wild community. Um, I think it's healthy and I think yeah, it's it's legit, dude. And there, there's a lot of good things coming creators. Not that it needs to be that way, but but it's it's really healthy right now. What's what's going on? I'm really yeah. excited about for the community. It's really good. Awesome. Thanks, really good. Really yeah, good. I look up to you guys. Yeah, you. Well, seriously. Thanks. Man. We, we look up lot. to you based on your work ethic. <laughs> yeah, great work with ethic. your work, you work ethic. ethic. So, absolutely. Yeah, if you want to do content creation, take take a page out of Grace for Days book. So, guys, if you haven't yeah. uh, checked out uh, Grace for Days, do that. Also, we have a Twitter. We have a Discord. We have. Um, uh, you can listen to us on podcast systems on uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, and iTunes. If you're listening to that now, you also have a YouTube channel that you're missing out on some other stuff we do. So check that out. If you want to be on Def Talk, we don't care who you are. A lot you of know, other stuff we do. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be a content creator like Grays. Email us at melderon.gaming at gmail.com. There is a little bit of a waiting list right now, so give us some time to get to get that taken care of. So uh, with that, take it away, Def Camp. All right, guys. Until next time, this is Def Camp. And Melderon and... Grace for days. Peace. Peace Keep on keybinding and grinding, baby. Oh, yeah.